and welcome to the Scientix webinar, 3D Printing and STEM Education. My name is Marina Jimenez, and I will moderate this session. With us today, we have the speaker of the session, Gergely Linadori, who is the Scientix Ambassador from Hungary. He participated in a roundtable on the use of robots in STEM education during the second Scientix conference held in October 2014, and has already been the presenter at two other Scientix webinars, one on one-on-one -on -one programs and the use of mobile phones on field trips. He will present this topic over the following 45 minutes, and for the 15 minutes left after Gergely's presentation, we would like to welcome your questions about these evening topics. Please do not hesitate to use the chat to ask your questions, but also to share your experiences regarding the use of cloud-based systems, sorry, of 3D printing, and any of other comments or suggestions that you might have. Along with us, my colleague Enrique with the Scientix account will be helping you with any technical problems you might have, so please write to him privately in the chat if you're experiencing any difficulty in attending the session. I would also like to remind you to please turn off your cameras and microphones during the talk and address your questions into the dedicated chat. That's all from my side, so I will now give the floor to Gergely to begin the session. This is the kind of uh, 3D printing that is mainly used, uh, um, at least in the affordable scale that we are talking about. And uh, as uh, in the uh, past 10, 15 years, a lot of the patents uh, which are connected with 3D printing uh, uh, became free to use, so uh, the whole technology became kind of affordable. Uh, there are a lot of different machines that you can uh, get and use. Uh, here in my school, we have three of them, and I would like to show them to you. Uh, this one, this small one is called Cube 3D, and uh, it is a very slim, simple, uh, the filament use is quite expensive for that, and uh, it doesn't have a heated bed. You have to put a glue layer here on the tray, and uh, then it builds the whole uh, model on it. Uh, this other one here that you can see is called Fretbot, and uh, this one is... Uh, uh, assembled in Hungary, and we got it as a present from the uh, manufacturers, and we like it a lot. This is a very reliable machine, and you can see it working uh, right now. There you can see that there is a head which moves around, and uh, the plastic is coming out of it. So this is how the whole technology works. And the tray is lowered layer by layer, and that's how the layers are deposited, one after the other. The third machine that uh, I would like to show is a Mangal 90, and uh, the uh, specialty of this one is that we got it as a do-it-yourself kit, and, uh, and we assembled it uh, ourselves. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's also working quite quite nicely. Though the the one that we use the most is this the crash board. Uh, so some things that that what are the uh, price ranges that you can buy these machines in? Uh, it's around uh, five hundred and uh, two thousand euros, of course. There is no top level, so you can buy very, very expensive uh, machines. But in, in, in the around uh, uh, 1,900 euro category, you can buy very good ones. Uh, if you take it on yourself to assemble it, then you can buy it much cheaper as do-it-yourself kits. Um, what is uh, the material that they are using? The material that these machines are using uh, are plastic, of course, and uh, mainly there are two types of plastics that they are using, uh, PLA, polylactic acid, and ADF. Uh, mainly what I think is good for uh, school use is PLA. PLA is uh, recyclable and uh, biodegradable and quite cheap. Uh, it's around 15 euros per kilogram 
and a kilogram is a lot. You can you can print a lot from a, a kilogram of PLA. So once you have the machine running, then uh, the upkeep costs are not that high. Uh, the filament is not not expensive. Of course, with some special machines like this uh, uh, Cube 3D that I have shown first, there you have to buy their special filament, and that costs uh, uh, a lot more than the uh, general one for the other machine. Okay, so this is the uh, the whole process that you can go through when you are uh, printing. Uh, the first is uh, designing your object and exporting it in the uh, format that uh, you will need. The two formats that are uh, used most of the time are STL and OBJ. Uh, and you can then put this model into uh, a slicer program. The slicer program generates the comments for the 3D printer, how to go through it. What, what it generates is uh, there is a special language for 3D printers. It is called G-code and uh, actually just tells uh, where to position the head and how much filament to put through it and how to move the head around. And when you generated the code, then you can uh, uh, upload it to your printer and print it. So this is the whole uh, process that you have to go through. Let's uh, have a look at it uh, uh, a bit from, uh, from one uh, step to the next. So, using CAD programs. Actually, there are two CAD programs that you can use, uh, which are free, and I think they can be a very good introduction to 3D design uh, for students. One of them is a good introduction to 3D design. The other is also a good introduction into coding. So, the first of them is uh, called uh, SketchUp. Uh, earlier, it was a Google product, and I will try to share uh, my application and show you SketchUp. I, I hope you can see it right now. So this is SketchUp, and, and here you can uh, simply put down uh, a circle and uh, when I say to raise the circle, then it becomes a cylinder, and I can look around and move around, and I can even uh, put another circle here and uh, put it oh, backwards. Let's see, not on the uh, uh, face, but here, if I put it and push it back, I can uh, uh, put a square here, raise it, and uh, get it back, push it this way, and so on and so on. So it is uh, uh, quite easy to use uh, and quite easy to uh, learn, and there are a lot of uh, uh, tutorials that you can find uh, everywhere on the web about it uh, and uh, and you can build your uh, models with this draw your models with this and uh, uh, this is free to use uh, for uh, education so if you are from a school or if you are a student then uh, you are free to use SketchUp so, yeah, this was one of them. The other one uh, that I would like to show you is called OpenSCAD, and, uh, and it works on a bit uh, different uh, way. Because in OpenSCAD, you can program your 3D model. So here it is, you can see that uh, 
that uh, how are we now? Yeah. Oh yeah. So here is uh, the program. Right now, the, the thing which only can be seen is this, a square with uh, a radius of seven is put here. And if I also show the cube, then you can see that this is the cube with a radius of, uh, of uh, 10 centered here. But if I tell it, that make a difference of the two, so kind of distract the sphere from the cube, then what I will see is this. And uh, what is uh, very nice in this uh, uh, program is that you can use uh, cycles like four statements or uh, switches like if statements and uh, and you can design very complicated things from programming and uh, my experience uh, was with teaching coding that uh, students uh, really like it if it's not just happening on the uh, screen but there is something that they can take in their hands connected to the coding. And uh, actually, this is uh, a chance to give them that. They can code the object, and when they uh, export it, they can print it, and they can take it in their hands. So uh, that is the thing why I like OpenSCAD, and I like to teach it and use it. Thanks, sir. Okay, so that was uh, uh, designing with, with CAD programs. You can also use uh, 3D Studio Max. Uh, it is free to use for uh, schools, actually. And while we are at that, I, I, I would like to show you how our little printing is going on. I don't know if anything can be seen of it. Not really, huh? No. Okay, then it will be a surprise to you what we are printing here. Uh, okay. So the next step uh, is fixing your model uh, because a lot of times when you design it, there are little holes in it or little irregularities, uh, especially if you are working with SketchUp. Uh, with, uh, with OpenSCAD, not that much because there, everything is exactly where you are positioned in because you are not drawing it, but you are programming it, coding it. But with SketchUp, there are a lot of little irregularities and there are uh, a couple of programs that you can use to fix your model to make it printable. One of them is NetFab, but uh, uh, Windows 10 has uh, an innate 3D builder which works also fine. And you simply uh, unload your programming or your uh, model in it, and it fixes it for irregularities, and uh, it's ready to get to the printing. But of course, before uh, you print, you have to slice it. And for that, you have to use a slicer program. There are a lot of slicer programs that you can use. Uh, my favorite is Craftware. It's uh, uh, written by the same company who produced our uh, 3D printer, and it's free to use. So, uh, yeah. I don't know, I think the uh, presentation will be uh, shared and there are the links in the presentation, but there are also here uh, in below, I, I, I put some of the links. But, uh, uh, and, and also in the announcement of the webinar, you can find this. So slicing is also very easy to do. I, I would like to show that also to you, how it works. So, 
here you have this space. Uh, this is the, the space of uh, uh, the printer, and you can add your model here. So, for instance, here it is. It's a uh, it's a copain molecule that you can see here. Two parts of it. Uh, this is also something that I, I will tell you later. And you can scale it if you want. Uh, make it bigger. Let's double the size. Uh, you can uh, move it around where to put it for the printing. And then you have to slice it. So here is the slicer. There are a lot of things that you can uh, set here, but we go for the easy mode and uh, say that we would like to slice it. And here you can see how it would look like. There are 32 layers to it. And uh, if you look around here, we can see how it will be printed. So that's how it, it's printed. And uh, so that's how you can uh, uh, slice it. And here is the G code that you can generate from it. Uh, a couple of words about what you can print, uh, print and what you can't print. Uh, it is important that as uh, lines by lines are built up, uh, you cannot print something that is hanging just in the air. Uh, usually what the printers can do quite well are uh, 45 degrees. So if it's, uh, it's, it's a 45 degree angle, then you can print it quite well. But uh, you don't have to worry. There are ways going around that you can uh, do uh, to print a lot of things which are not uh, uh, just having all those uh, angles. One of the things is cutting it in half. So as you can see here with this coffein molecule, I cut it in half and the two halves are printed and then they are just glued together. Another thing uh, that you can do is to generate subwords. You can generate subwords uh, which are printed under your little thing and you simply break it off uh, and uh, it works perfectly. So this is how uh, slicing works. And of course, the next step, as I have said, is printing. So what can you use this uh, uh, technology in the school? Uh, it's uh, over a year now that we have uh, 3D printers in our school. And uh, I had the feeling, but well, I had the experience that there are uh, four major ways how you can use it. Uh, one of them is printing teaching aids for yourself. Another uh, is uh, to design your printing aids that you would name. Uh, the third one is having a kind of a maker space for students who are interested in design, who are interested in uh, uh, designing their own things uh, and, and print it for them. And uh, the fourth one is using it in school projects. Uh, and I would like to tell a couple of examples for all. Uh, the first of them is uh, that you can find very easily uh, models for teaching that you can use in teaching. Um, a fantastic way for that is Thingiverse. Thingiverse, which I would like to show you, right now yeah here so thingiverse uh, is a, a collection of uh, models everybody can uh, upload a model here that they uh, designed or printed uh, it can be downloaded modified maybe and uh, and then uh, used again or uploaded in a, a modified form. 
And here you can find a lot of uh, very good teaching materials that you can use in teaching. For instance, uh, I have found here uh, these, I don't know if you can see it. I will stop sharing now so you can see uh, here. These are uh, hinged ideal bodies that you can uh, put together and have, for instance, here an octahedron. Oops. Yeah. Here is my octahedron. And uh, this octahedron is very good in teaching the area uh, or the surface of it because you can simply put it out like this. And th these hinged uh, polyhedrons are found on sing reverse. The fantastic thing in them is that you can print it right here. You can print it together with the hinges. So these are not printed from uh, a lot of uh, uh, little parts, but you can print it like that. And uh, you can have a dodica head round or here it is, an ecosa head round flat out if you need. So but uh, uh, I have also found a very interesting thing, uh, 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 a model of uh, influenza virus and antibodies, and you can put it together and see how they are connected, uh, the antibodies to that. Or here is another thing that can be downloaded from Thingiverse. I don't know if anybody can guess what it is. I will tell, this is a digital sundial. So here, these little holes are designed in a way that if you put it in the right direction, then uh, the sun coming through shows uh, the uh, time in digital numbers. And uh, it is also very nice because you have to position it to uh, the south, and here this angle has to be the uh, latitude you are in. So it helps a lot in teaching the students and talking about how it can be designed, what they have to calculate it for, and, uh, and uh, the position of the sun uh, is taught with this very nicely. So these are a lot of things that uh, that you can uh, download from Thingiverse. Uh, two of the other links that I have put here, uh, the NIH link is for uh, 3D printable molecules and 3D printable uh, proteins and even 3D printable neural networks. So uh, you can give them into the hand of your students. And uh, the last one, africanfossils.org, is also a place where you can find uh, 3D models of, uh, of uh, uh, hominid species like Homo erectus and, uh, and the like. And if you don't have a 3D printer, you can even find there uh, little uh, blueprints, so you can cut it out slice by slice from uh, cardboard and build your own cardboard 3D model of the uh, of the uh, human uh, ancestors. Uh, the next thing is what you can do is. Uh, Printing your own uh, teaching gauge, and uh, 
there are a couple of them that I have designed, and I would like to show you what, what they are used for. Uh, one of the math teachers taught us that what the students uh, always have a trouble with is understanding that inside a cube or a, a column, these diagonals, this one and this one, together with the, uh, with this side, they form a right triangle. And it would be really nice to simply give it in their hands and show them how these diagonals are in. So it took me about an hour, actually, to design it. Uh, here it is in a cube. In a cube, it's also very nice because uh, if one side is one unit long, then it is square root two, and this one inside is square root three. So we made that. Uh, one of the other things that I did uh, when I was uh, teaching uh, to my students uh, uh, about uh, the history of Earth, I wanted to show them how geologists are trying to put together the different strata and how they work. So what I did was that I printed, I designed and printed a lot of uh, little fossils, something like little uh, animals. Uh, and then I used uh, uh, Play-Doh, different colored Play-Doh, and put them inside it and made the Play-Dohs different layers with it. What they had to do was to simply go layer by layer and write down the color of the layer and what kind of fossils they could find. And then from the different samples, trying to put together that which strata uh, is the same as the other and uh, which uh, uh, fossil is the earliest and how they can uh, uh, evolve one from the other and so on. So, and, and for that, I use that. Or uh, uh, a third uh, example, I think, yeah, it's a third example was, uh, making these uh, uh, custom dice. They have some text on them in Hungarian, and uh, they are used for a game uh, of the voter cycle. Uh, what we did was that there were uh, stops, uh, stations like the ocean or the clouds or the soil, uh, plants, animals, and each one of these stations had a different uh, uh, dice, a special dice. When someone was there, you had to throw with the dice and it told them where to go. And they had their own passports where they have written down which way they uh, went through, where they uh, stayed the most and how as uh, a molecule of water, they moved around uh, the cycle. So for these, I made this uh, uh, special dice. But really, I think uh, uh, the possibilities are, are quite endless of, uh, of designing your uh, teaching materials. Uh, it is simply that if you come up with an idea, then you just go for it and do it. Uh, designing these dice was also about an hour, one and a half. Uh, let them work. So let let the, the students do what they would like to do, uh, uh, what they would like to build with. And uh, uh, there are a lot of students who got excited by the uh, idea that they can uh, design and then print something. Uh, in my school, uh, uh, the 11th year students have to make a project uh, to show that what they have uh, learned so far uh, in the school. And this project can be almost anything that they would like to do. Uh, but something that they work with uh, through the whole year. And uh, uh, in the last year, uh, a lot of the students use the 3D printer. Uh, 
One of them was printing a drone uh, that he designed, uh, got the little motors and uh, and everything from uh, different places and built it together. Another uh, one was that uh, uh, they built uh, a data logger based on Arduino uh, that you can use to uh, make uh, uh, experiments in a physics class. Or uh, one of the other ones uh, 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 decided to make a game for the others using the Lego robots. It was a rescue mission. And uh, the thing that you have to rescue, uh, that you have to take off, uh, uh, take out from the uh, labyrinth uh, he designed and 3D printed it. Uh, we are going on a uh, on the uh, first Lego League uh, competition. Actually, we are searching there tomorrow uh, at Kosice, Slovakia. And uh, there you have to present the project and the project that my students are presenting is connected to trash is uh, uh, a game that uh, they designed, an educational game uh, that they designed, and the pieces of, of the game are also 3D printed by them. And uh, something that can be very interesting even for uh, smaller kids, uh, I think, is Printcraft that you can find here, printcraft.org, which uh, uses Minecraft uh, and 3D printing. This is a, a server where you can uh, go on and uh, whatever you build in that world, uh, you can download as a printable 3D model. So even with small kids uh, uh, or smaller kids, uh, you can, who are already familiar with uh, Minecraft, uh, you can use it so they can uh, build their things. So even if you simply just let them work, it, uh, it works well. And then, of course, uh, uh, the projects uh, that you can use in school, uh, there are a lot of projects that, uh, that can be uh, uh, used together with uh, uh, 3D printing. Uh, if you want to uh, develop your students' design thinking, uh, then uh, it can be very good for that. Uh, it can be a very good tool for differentiation. So some of the students can work on uh, different objects or different designs, or the ones who are advanced can go on to 3D printing. Uh, it can be a very good uh, entrance to coding uh, uh, through the use of uh, OpenSCAD. And uh, my experience was that uh, 3D printing is a very good way for uh, hole in the wall learning. I don't know if you are familiar with uh, uh, this idea of Sugata Mitra, uh, who, what he did was that he simply put uh, a computer in Delhi in some uh, uh, poor coder on the wall, and the uh, kids started to work with it and uh, they simply told themselves because it was interesting. And I have to tell you that working with uh, 3D printing, I had the same experiences. Uh, this Christmas, we worked with uh, uh, a group uh, on uh, uh, designing uh, board game pieces. So what they did was that they designed board game pieces and I can show you uh, the results of that because it's uh, uploaded to Stingiverse, one, one collection. Of course, they, they made a lot more. Uh, if I can uh, find it, but it takes a lot of time. So yeah, here it is. Uh, and now I can show you. There is a game called Tablut. It, it's uh, an ancient game. Uh, board game and there are three uh, different uh, pieces in there so they had to design these three pieces 
uh, the defenders, the attackers, and the king. And uh, for instance, this is one uh, of the things that they have done. That's how they look like. This is the king. Uh, this is the knight, the defender, and this is the attacker. And uh, what was amazing for me was that uh, what I did, we had uh, four classes to work with it. So it was uh, uh, three hours that they, they could spend with it. And uh, I have shown them uh, first uh, the basics of SketchUp, but uh, for less than 10 minutes or something like that. And uh, told them that, okay, now it's your turn. Make it, make the pieces. And uh, then they asked me a couple of minutes later, one of the students said, okay, but how can you make a square in SketchUp? And uh, I told them that I have no idea, but I will look it up. You can look it up and let's see who is the faster. And uh, in two minutes they said, okay, we got it. And uh, because they simply looked on YouTube for a tutorial about how to make stairs in SketchUp. Actually, they were really faster than me. And uh, so they, they, they learned a lot, they liked it a lot, and then they could take home their board game with all the pieces and they were happy with that. Uh, and it was a very intensive learning that they had. Uh, there are a couple of projects which are, uh, which you can use uh, with, uh, with uh, 3D printing. Uh, Autodesk uh, has them here, Project Ignite. Uh, there are a lot of projects really ready to use, custom built, so you, you can take all those materials and take it in the winter class and use it. Or CTX project, which is about designing a new city and designing the buildings and uh, then uh, bringing uh, uh, it to life with 3D printing. Uh, but you can come up with your own projects, of course. So, things that you have to be aware of when, when you are using uh, 3D printing in the school. First of all, it takes time to print. Uh, the, the new generation of stereolithographic printers uh, are quite fast, but uh, the, the traditional ones, the affordable ones are slow. Uh, when I'm saying slow, I mean that, for instance, this cube takes about an hour to print. So you can imagine that uh, printing this part in the sundial it was more than a day. Uh, if you have a class of a lot of students uh, who design their things and you want them to print it, then you have to calculate the time for that. So it, it will take time. In, around Christmas when we did it, this board game thing, I spent uh, the whole night here in school printing for that. Uh, the next thing is that it's, it's never 100%. There are always glitches. Uh, glitches in the design, there are glitches in the printing, the filament breaks, uh, it's not calibrated well, and so on. It happens. Uh, and because the, uh, the material is so cheap, it's not such a great problem. And uh, uh, one last thing that I think is important to uh, think about is that uh, if you present it right to the student, then uh, then it will not be a geek thing, uh, designing and then printing. Uh, it will be something that uh, uh, the girls would like to do uh, to uh, design their own belts and design their own medals. Uh, it will be something that uh, that everybody would like to do. It's 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 a uh, it's an interesting thing and uh, so I would like to show you what uh, we printed while I was talking. I take it off from the bed and uh, 
So here it is. It doesn't look that uh, uh, the material I, I said in the beginning, it's about uh, 15 euros per kilogram. And a kilogram is a lot. So, but if I show it this way, taken from the raft, I guess you can recognize it. It's a little scientific logo. So it took about 40 minutes to print. OK, so that's all that I wanted to tell. Uh, but I would be happy to answer any questions that you would have uh, regarding it. Or if you have anything to add or any ideas, any questions. Hello, Gergeli. Hello. Thank you very much for this presentation. And that logo of Scientix was really, really cool. Um, we do have three questions that people asked while you were talking. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the one, the first one. Actually, I think you answered already two, but in case you want to say something else about them, the first one was from Luna Lanza, and he asked if students could build 3D objects um, related to subjects to the subject of chemistry and then print them at the school. You already mentioned molecules and proteins. I don't know if you have any other idea to share. Well, uh, so far what I did uh, was that, uh, especially uh, with uh, with with the molecules, it's really nice to have uh, uh, showing them. But but I, I a moment I, I take something to show. No problem. On the meantime, if anybody else has any other questions, please write them now in the chat, and I will ask Gergely. So uh, here, uh, this one is uh, an influenza virus, mm -hmm. and this is. Uh, an antibody that can connect to the right epitope, and then you can see how how it works. So this is something that you can. It, actually, this one is on Thingiverse, so uh, it's, it's not designed by me. Uh, and uh, I think with chemistry, you can also use it uh, even to to have, uh, 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 for instance, one of my students is right now. Doing the data logger that I I have shown I have told you that he's making this data logger and one of the things that he's doing is uh, that um, he's making a tube uh, with uh, with black plastic. Uh, there is a, a test tube in it and a light source uh, at the top of it and uh, a light sensor at the bottom of it. And what you can do is that you put in different materials, and uh, if precipitation happens, uh, then of course the light uh, uh, diminishes, which gets through. And uh, you can uh, measure very nicely reaction speeds with this. And uh, he designed the whole apparatus and uh, printed it uh, on the 3D printer, for instance. That sounds very nice. Thanks for sharing. Uh, we had a couple more questions. Uh, Dalibor Todorovic, he was asking about if you had any information on equipment that is already available in schools in, in Europe in general, if you have any information about that. Well, I, I, I know that there are a lot of, uh, or, or, or some projects here and there. Uh, for instance, um, in Austria, there are uh, uh, these uh, workshops where teachers build their own 3D printers from uh, do-it-yourself kits and uh, then take it home and use it at the school. Uh, but I, I don't know of any large-scale uh, thing uh, of 3D printing. There are there are a lot of uh, software which is free for schools to use. 
For instance, all the Autodesk softwares are free for schools to use. SketchUp is free for schools to use. So uh, that is something that, that is given to schools. But as for, as for large-scale 3D printing projects, I'm, I'm not aware of. OK. Thanks for that. We will share the links uh, that Gergely was mentioning uh, afterwards. Then there was another question by Nada Stojasevic. Um, she was asking, you already replied to this one, but she was asking uh, how cheap is the material? If you could maybe like say expand a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's quite cheap. So I, I mean, uh, So here, as you can see, this, when it's full, it's one kilogram of uh, filament, this PLA filament, and this is about 15 euros. And uh, we have been uh, printing uh, in the past, what would I say, uh, four months. This one, the craft bot was running almost continuously, and we used about three kilos of of the filament. So I think the upkeep is 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 really cheap. The machine itself is not. Okay. Uh, okay, that answers the question. One last one. It's a comment that I just read on the chat, and I think this is going to be our last one. Uh, Again, Dalibor, he mentions, I think it's the right thing to give the students the task to make a broken part. For example, broken locks of the washing machine or sprocket roller of a printer, etc. So I guess these are ideas for students. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. you have any input on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's also nice. It's interesting. Yeah. Also, I think there are a lot of design uh, tasks that you can do. Uh, there is a game. Um, which actually the idea can be used uh, where uh, the task of groups is to design something for someone, like uh, design uh, a drinking cup for an astronaut, or design uh, a roller braid for a vampire, and things like that. So it can be even fantastic. And that they have to think about, it really goes into the design uh, uh, thinking. and. Uh, and then, uh, then uh, they can really print out uh, the whole thing or a model of it and show it to others. Uh, as for this, that if, if, if I work on my own or in a team, uh, I, I, there is uh, another teacher that I work very closely with uh, in this uh, uh, place that you see here. This is our robotics slash makerspace uh, part of the school. And, uh, and there are about 30 students who are uh, working here in their free time, uh, and they more or less live here. Uh, and I'm working together with them very closely. There are a lot of things that they know much better than I do. Okay. Uh Sorry, my camera. Thank you, Gergeli. There was, in fact, just another question on the chat. You kind of answer it now. Uh, Marina, she's asking if you work on your own or with a team. Yeah, yeah I just answered you that. You just answered yeah. it, yes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, actually, this is very funny. Every time someone was asking a question of the chat, you would just reply it in the next minute. But just in case you wanted to add something else. No, no, no. I, I think that's it. Okay, so I think that will be everything for this uh, session. Thank you very much for everyone who's been taking part in the webinar, for sharing your ideas, and of course, thank you, Gergely, for being our presenter for tonight. Um, in the upcoming days, we will send a follow-up email with a service, and then we will send you all the appropriate links. And just for your information, the next webinar will be on the 19th of February, um, and the topic will be Mathematical model, Modeling of Real-Life Examples in STEM Education and IBTP. You will have all the information on the Scientix website. And thank you very much for joining us.